We're talking about the human side of artificial intelligence. I mean, or is it human, or is it replacing humans? Uh, I think there's, there's a tremendous ongoing discussion about how artificial intelligence is going to affect people in corporations and in life. Uh, Leslie, first of all, do, should people be concerned? Is this something, are there, um, their beliefs and ideas about AI in alignment with reality? Um, no. Okay, um, we're my done. My general finding. <laughs> um, part of the problem is the role of the media in all this and, uh, and the marketing of, of major corporates that have a vested interest in, in AI. The media tend to tell only t one of two stories, either it's a triumph or a disaster. The triumph story is uh, it's seamless technology that will be working for humankind uh, and we can all spend our time on the beach. Uh, the disaster story is it's going to take over all our jobs, it's going to replace humans, and of course the truth is much somewhere in between this, uh, and it's variable in terms of who it's going to impact and which regions, which sectors, uh, which countries, um, and the speed of deployment. Uh, so uh, I think there's a different story to be told, which is not, the, the job loss story I think is a false one. I think the real story is about how we transition to using these technologies in a reasonable way. So, uh, Pat, the, this is part of you know, a conversation I'm, I'm sure you're building is something you have with people in companies uh, about redefining, redefining roles, right, uh, to, to, to get them prepared. You know, so the first conversation about integrating what you call robotic process automation uh, is about people, right? It's the people conversation first. So how, do, how does that work? Like, how do, you, how do you start to have that conversation? Well, as um, you know, the, the key thing of what we're trying to do with our, our digital workers, and we call them digital workers rather than robots now. We, we have talked about the RPA Digital term. workers are still software, right? So you're yes, not it's still about, software, right, yeah. Right. Okay. So it's workers in the digital context, which most businesses are now, you know. Uh, even if they've got a physical side to their business, there's still an enormous amount of digital, the whole digital transformation, all of these things we've talked about. But the key thing is, is that the people that are working with these digital workers have to see them as co-workers mm -hmm. uh, and have to see them as part of their workforce. So uh, you know, some of our customers, most of our customers in fact, uh, they've named their robots. Mm -hmm. So uh, um, there's a robot called Poppy. Uh, which is uh, came, went live on Remembrance Day. Um, so there's this, um, and I'm going to try and say the word, anthropomorphism. Did I get that right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. you did. Yes. That was perfect. Um, where, and that's really helpful because you can't impose that. Um, so at the ex example with Poppy, the, the, the team that built that robot and the person that ultimately owns that robot uh, actually has a, has a she, f she feels it's, a member of her team, and it's somebody that she's nurtured and she's right. trained. And, and the robot is doing a lot of the stuff that they, nobody wanted to do. It was the team with the highest turnover of staff. It had an accuracy issue because it was just taking all these various insurance forms and posting them onto the Lloyds of London market. And there was all this information that they were losing as well. But the, the key thing there was, was it was the, the human building, the human-like robot. Right. And, and it wasn't the robot overlord. You know, huh. It was very clear who was in right. charge of who. All right, Pam, uh, when you talk to companies, uh, is, is that something that you encourage, that this sort of uh, humanization of these things? I mean, it's so interesting to hear you know, people naming things. I often see the companies that are introducing voice assistants, they're giving them names, which, by the way, I keep thinking, where did Siri come from when you've got, you know, it's like, it doesn't make sense how Apple came up with that name. But uh, do you encourage that? Uh, the sort of, you know, let's give it a name and then we'll feel like it's a member of the team. Yeah, what we, um, what we encourage people to do is to think, you know, we, we think about human-centric or human-centered AI, i.e. that, you know, AI is there to augment, you know, what people are doing, what employees are doing, um, which just goes back to the same pat, uh, point that Pat made. 
You know, it's, you know, how do you use your AI, how do you use your robots, how do you use your digital workers to actually enhance what you're doing as an employee and therefore in, enable you to in, in, move to more of the va um, higher value, value added, more sensitive, more complex roles and tasks in the organisation. Right, what about the emotional side? Is yeah. you know, People understand, Leslie, working in an office, working with a computer, yeah. working with other people, mm -hmm. and they even have certain interpersonal skills yeah. they've developed. Mm -hmm. But when you introduce an AI or a robotic yeah. process, yeah. You know, is there a different emotional component, that, a skill that, that people need to learn, or should they be, is it business as usual? I find it interesting that people divide the world into what they do in their homes and, then, and what they do at their work. I mean, at home, we're all very... Uh, IT literate and uh, use IT all the time and want to buy more and yet the idea that these same people are going to go into work and behave in, in different ways is, is quite an intriguing uh, assumption isn't it? Right. Uh, in fact most people complain that their corporates are not IT literate right. enough, yeah. they are, they're not sophisticated enough and they welcome uh, a lot of this technology as uh, you know this is a sign of progress, a mm -hmm. sign of investment and by the way we want to do our jobs better and by the way we, we don't want to do these tasks uh, um, and so uh, interestingly just to extend the point that was made earlier about um, naming robots they also make them visible they, they, they you know uh, mm -hmm. the, you, you mentioned Poppy yeah. Poppy actually exists it's a she and that's the other thing you can do with the robots right. is, is flatten out all your peaks and troughs because mm -hmm. not all work is constant the whole right. time you know you might have end of quarter end of yeah. month end of year mm -hmm. And, and, and the robots help you to smooth those curves out. So, so basically, you can change the dynamic of your business. And, and what's really interesting is our conference. We just had one in New York and one in London. And there was about 2,500 people in those events. And only two years ago, our, our event was 70 people. And, and, and there were 2,500 people there who all had RPA or robotics or AI in their job title. Mm. And there was nobody two years ago, wow. you know, or hardly anybody. So, you know, there's a whole new skill set and a whole new set of talent that's, that's, that's getting involved in this. Yeah, I really do think, you know, and I don't know, it's going to take time, and it will take time through the process of people experimenting more, doing more proof of concepts, more projects with automation, to be able to see that actually what automation is enabling um, is that, you know, we can remove the the boring, the mundane, the, in effect, the tasks that mean that people can't, you know, collaborate with right. others in the way that they would want to, because they're having to do so much more of the mundane, and automation can help to remove that, so in effect, we can spend more of our time mm -hmm. doing the, the sorts of things that mean that, you know, requires much more of an emotional mm -hmm. connection, the opportunity to collaborate, do harder work, all of that. Is that something workforces get intuitively, or do you have to explain that to them? No, I, I think, I mean, personally, it'd be interesting to see what um, the others think. I think there is still um, a concern at the mention of automation. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And it's only when, um, you know, they actually start to see what that automation actually means in the organisation. So the first projects go in, they can actually then see the implications for their co-workers. You know, and therefore, you know, there can, we can then build some trust around why automation is actually a good thing. I think it's one of those things where people actually have to see the, the benefits mm. rather than at the moment, as you said, you know, there's a yeah. lot of social and media mm. stuff mm. around. Mm.